Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watched on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, this year has been insane. People see something's going on right now, and they're asking questions. They're saying, what in the world's, what in the world's going on, and what in the world's coming next? The bottom line is there's a transition that's occurring right now. This coronavirus pandemic, or plandemic as many of us like to call it, uh, because the virus is real, right? but the agenda behind the coronavirus is much, much, much bigger, setting the stage for a coming new world order, you know, one world government, a one world religion, and a one world currency. Right? We're seeing the stage getting set up now for the beast system, which the technology is here now for the mark of the beast system. Right? And it wasn't here in previous generations, but it will not be implemented until during the tribulation period. Um, you know, many of you have heard the phrase, never let a crisis go to waste. And it seems like that's exactly what the coronavirus pandemic is doing. The globalists are using the coronavirus pandemic. Um, it's offered, you know, it has offered such an unprecedented crisis that the globalists are gladly going to util utilize it. You know, the World Economic Forum, which is a non-government organization, they meet annually in Davos, which is a fashionable ski resort, to basically to discuss the fate of the world. This upcoming year, which is 2021, the theme of the Davos Summit is called the Great Reset. So again, every year they meet in Davos, Switzerland, right, a fashionable ski resort, and there's a different theme every year, right? And the theme for this upcoming year, 2021, is called the Great Reset. Initially, the uh, summit was supposed to be held in January, right? But because of the coronavirus, they've now pushed it uh, to the summer of 2021. But at this conference, you're going to see a lot of globalists, you know, the elite, and it's going to connect with young people. I think right now there's over 11,000 they call them global shapers and alumni from 400 and 420 different hubs and cities around the world. They call it the global shapers community for their highly experienced input into the future of the world. But the bottom line, folks, it is so clear where this is all headed. Again, you have a virus, a coronavirus pandemic or plandemic, all right? When you look deep into this and you connect all the dots, again, the virus is real. But the agenda behind the coronavirus is much, much, much bigger. Again, it basically shuts down the entire world for three months, and it's still causing its issues around the world. All right, and it's headed right toward a new world government or a new world order. But again, just look at the theme. Again, next year, 2021 in Davos. All right, the theme is called the Great Reset. And if you still don't think that this is clearly paving the way for the coming one world government, the new world order, and setting the stage for the rise of the Antichrist after the rapture of the church, right? Watch this little trailer. Uh, this is actually from the World Economic Forum, kind of providing a little trailer, a little tease for next year's summit in Davos. Again, the Great Reset.
And if that doesn't convince you where this is all headed right now, again, the stage getting set up for the coming New World Order, the One World Government, and the rise of the Antichrist after the rapture of the church, I wanted to share with you an article just in from Prophecy News Watch titled, The Great Reset, Are We Being Conditioned for the Rise of the Antichrist? Let me read some of this to you. When 2020 began, who could have imagined that a virus from China would take us closer to the tribulation? However, COVID-19 has done exactly that. Since the virus first appeared in the United States, the goal line for easing government restrictions, lockdowns, quarantines, and face masks has continually changed. They have gone from flattening the curve, which the CDC said would take two to four weeks, to reduce hospital admissions, to everyone receiving a vaccination, and to Dr. Fauci recently stating that people can return to movie theaters only after the vaccine has been available for an entire year. But will the arrival of, vac of a vaccine mark a return to normal? According to, to Tucker Carlson's August 26th report on the Fox News Channel, the goal line has moved yet again. He quoted the World Health Organization Director General Dr. Tedros Adenham, however you pronounce his last name, as stating that finding a vaccine for COVID-19 is not the final goal. No, the ultimate aim is the reordering, listen to this, is the reordering of society. He quoted the WHO director as also saying, this we will not, we cannot go back to the way things were. Dr. Jabris of the World Health Organization summed it up this way. The coronavirus pandemic has given new impetus to the need to accelerate efforts to respond to climate change. Tucker Carlson quoted Bill Gates as saying that the coronavirus pandemic signifies that the rest of us will have to sacrifice even more to save the earth from warming. So what's the connection between the virus and climate control? Tucker Carlson nails it with these words. Both are pretexts for mass social control. This social control is paving the way for the coming world government. The global warming alarm and the fear generated by the coronavirus pandemic are prepping society for the arrival of the Antichrist. One need not look any further than to the World Economic Forum website to see how the global elite seek to use this crisis to reorder society for what they call the Great Reset. Below are a couple of the opening quotes from the Great Reset page on the WEF website. There is an urgent need for global stakeholders to cooperate in simultaneously managing the direct consequences of the coronavirus crisis. To improve the state of the world, the World Economic Forum is starting the Great Reset initiative. The push for the Great Reset has reached the United Nations. Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, added this to the call for the reordering of the world governments on the basis of both the pandemic and climate change. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. We must build more equal, inclusive, and sustainable economies and societies that are more resilient in the face of pandemics, climate change, and the many other global changes we face. Coronavirus and climate change constitute a wake-up call for global changes, which further the need for the Great Reset, the coming world order of the tribulation over which the Antichrist will someday rule. The elite who operate the WEF, the World Economic Forum, do not hide their intention to use climate change and the virus as the pretext for a one-world government. Peter Kinnig wrote this about the coronavirus, about how coronavirus is advancing the agenda of the elite toward the one world government, which he calls the beast. We have been in, become enslaved to the beast. The beast calls a shot on boom or bust of our economies, on whom should be shackled by debt, when and where a pandemic should break out, and on the conditions of surviving the pandemic, for example, social confinement. And on top of it all, the instruments the beast uses very cleverly are a tiny, tiny, in, in, invisible enemy called a virus, and a huge but also an invisible en enemy called fear. That keeps us off the street, off reunions with our friends, and off social 
and off of our social entertainment, theater, sports, or a picnic in the park. I find it quite remarkable that although Mr. Kinnick does not claim any knowledge of Bible prophecy, he uses the terminology of Daniel and the book of Revelation in describing the kingdom of the Antichrist. I provide these quotes to show how climate change and COVID-19 lie beyond the push for the Great Reset. We see evidence of this in the United Nations Agenda 2030, which lists goals for a one-world government that it hopes to be in place by 2030. The way things are moving is going to be in place way before then. The New Green Deal in the United States mirrors the goals of Agenda 2030 with its agenda for a Marxist totalitarian world order, a.k.a. The beast. How are the elite globalists of our world preparing the world to follow their lead in establishing a Marxist government? Below are some of the ways they will use the coronavirus as well as climate change for their demonic purposes to bring about the great reset that will pave the way for the rule of the Antichrist during the tribulation. The first tool is fear. So fear, the first tool in the arsenal of the globalists is fear, and they have succeeded in creating a great deal of it both in the United States and throughout the world. They advanced the horrors of climate change for decades, but this alone has not caught the attention of the masses that they had hoped it would. An abundance of failed predictions along with, many, along with an army of scientists who now dispute the dire warnings of impending doom have diminished the impact of climate alarm on many people. It consistently ranks low on the list of concerns for voters. The globalists needed a crisis that would impact everyone in the world, and thus coronavirus arrived on the scene. Number two, to tell people to submit for their own well-being. The combination of fear and the great deception of our time have made a vast number of people willing to submit to the government, which they now regard as the protector of their health. As a result, they have willingly given up many of their rights and freedoms for the sake of remaining healthy, a trend sure to continue. The New World Order, aka the Beast, cannot exercise its dominion over people apart from their willingness to submit to dictates of a government they trust for their well-being and health. And very few pastors stand up against the restriction regarding the freedom of religion imposed on them by socialist governors. I thank the Lord for the courage of John MacArthur in this regard. Number three, lawlessness and violence. Billionaire globalists fund the violence and lawlessness we witness throughout the United States. The result of this will be the exact opposite of what those rioting believe they will accomplish with the fires, vicious attacks on the innocent, and the killing of law enforcement, enforcement officials. Those behind the Great Reset intend to use the breakdown of law and order to bring about a much more rigid police state, where those enforcing the rules of the state will pledge loyalty to a tyrannical world government rather than to one city or state or country. The protests against police cruelty will result in a totalitarian rule where everyone, regardless of race, nationality, or gender, will shake in fear at the sight of those enforcing the draconian rules of an all-powerful socialistic government. Number four, establish a need for government control. In order for the elite to achieve their ultimate goal of a one-world government, they must convince people of the need for more government control of their lives. This, this explains their devotion to the contrived climate emergency and why they will not let go of the increased control over our lives that they have achieved through the coronavirus crisis. President Donald Trump in the United States represent their greatest obstacles in achieving their objective, which is why we see the rioting in the nonstop media lies about our president. In 2016, Trump interrupted their march to world dominance, and they cannot allow for another delay in their effort to convince the world of its need for more government control. Powerful forces in our world, led by the devil himself, seek to put in place a one-world government and they will use everything they can to make it happen. They will not let go of the coronavirus health crisis until they have accomplished their goal to subject the entire world to the slavery of a Marxist regime. The good news. Tucker Carlson was spot on with his assessment of climate change and COVID-19. Both are pretexts for mass social control. The wearing of masks, 
the bowing of knees to the Black Lives Matter movement, and the vaccines consist of preconditioning people to both receive the mark of the beast during the tribulation and worship the Antichrist. This is the end game of what Satan seeks to accomplish through the Great Reset. The prophet Daniel, writing 2,600 years ago, wrote about the Great Reset on the WEF. He called it a beast with horns. The Apostle John in Revelation 13 added more details to this beast whom the Antichrist will someday personify. He is the man of lawlessness whom the Lord will destroy at his second coming. Since God long ago foretold the rise of the beast with the detail that we now see taking shape in our world, we can absolutely trust his word as to the coming destruction of this beast, both the government and the Antichrist who will personify the beast. Jesus will destroy both at his second coming coming. For those of us that belong to Christ, the good news of the gospel is that Jesus will come for us before the start of the tribulation and the culmination of the satanic plans of the globalists. We do not watch in fear for the great reset, but we eagerly await the appearance of our great Savior to take us back to the place he has prepared for us. We await our speedy departure from this world to heaven. Yes, the news about our world today is more than a little disconcerting, but our hope is is more glorious than we can imagine. Jesus is coming to take us home. We need to not buy into the fear of our time. The lawlessness and violence of our day tell us that the prophesied tribulation is ever so near. But before that can happen, we will reside in paradise with Jesus. But it's clear as day, folks. All of this and what's happening right now in the world is pushing us closer to the tribulation period. The stage is getting set up right now again for the rise of the Antichrist in the New World Order system right after the rapture of the church. Again, they're not trying to hide it anymore, folks. Again, next year, 2021, in Davos in the summer, the summit is literally going to be called the Great Reset. And they're not going to let this crisis go to waste. Jesus is coming. Again, the tribulation period is casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now. And if we know the rapture of the church is going to occur before the tribulation period begins, folks, we're not promised tomorrow. And if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life and you're watching this right now, it's time for you to repent, to believe the gospel, and to be converted to new life in Jesus Christ today. To repent, that means metanoia. It means to change your mind. Right? You're agreeing with God about your sin condition, that you're a sinner, in need of a Savior, that you can't save yourself, that Jesus Christ did it all for you on the cross at Calvary by shedding his precious blood. You're going from unbelief, dead in your sins, to belief, a new creature in Christ. But just look around you. This ship is sinking, and you need to get on the lifeboat right now, and that lifeboat is Jesus Christ. You think things are bad now? It's going to get a lot worse during the tribulation period. Just go read Revelation chapter 6 through Revelation chapter 19. And you're going to see the judgments that are going to be poured out on humanity during this coming tribulation period. You don't want to be here for what's coming. You can still be saved during this coming tribulation period, but you're going to be under the severe persecution of the Antichrist, the false prophet, in the New World Order system. And make no mistake about it, again, the Great Reset is setting the stage for the coming One World Government the New World Order, led by the Antichrist and the False Prophet. It's time for you to get on the lifeboat right now, which is Jesus Christ and Him alone. You can be saved right here, right now, this very moment. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you that now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. There's a full-speed train coming, but right before that train hits, Jesus Christ is going to rapture Harpazzo, Seize by force, snatch away those that are truly his off this planet to be with him in paradise while the judgment of God is being poured out on humanity during this coming tribulation period. Now is the accepted time. Now is a day of salvation. You're watching this video right now for a reason. What do you have to do to be saved? Well, the Apostle Paul tells you in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14, in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So first you have to hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, which the Apostle Paul gives you in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. And this is the gospel of your salvation, that you believe, that you're putting your faith and your trust 
in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on that cross of Calvary. You're believing Jesus Christ died on that cross for your sins. Him and him alone, no other name. That he was buried and that he rose from the dead. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And it says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Apostle Paul tells you, once you hear the gospel of your salvation again, which is Jesus died for your sins, he was buried, and he resurrected, he rose from the dead on the third day. Once you hear the gospel of your salvation, you believe it, you're putting your faith and your trust in it. In the finished work of Jesus Christ on that cross of Calvary, that he sh the blood he shed for you. Right? Once you believe this, it says next in Ephesians 1.13 that you're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Jesus loves you so much that he shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. He became sin for you on that cross at Calvary so you can be forgiven of your sin. He paid your sin debt in full that you can never pay on your own. So you can be forgiven of your sin and be with him forever. Right? But what saves you again is you believing, putting your faith and your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ on that cross at Calvary. Again, believing that he died on that cross for your sins, that he was buried and he resurrected. He rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. Here's the bottom line. None of us are promised our next breath here. We can die at any time. Heaven and hell are very real literal places and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and he's the only name that's going to save you. So I'm imploring you today as you see this ship continuing to sink to get on that lifeboat. Get saved right here and right now because tomorrow is not promised. That trumpet can sound at any time. Jesus is coming and he's coming quickly. Keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming and he's coming quickly. God bless you all.